Hello everyone, my name is Ben and today I will be talking about Redux middleware. Uh, a quick overview of what we'll be going over today is uh, we'll go over what is Redux, the uh, format of a middleware function for Redux, why it's so useful as a middleware, and some examples to help reinforce its usefulness. I'll try to make this quick because everyone knows what Redux is, but it's good just to kind of hammer in the basics so you'll really understand why it's important when we get to the actual middleware function. So it provides a way, easy way to centralize the state in our applications. Uh, the state cannot change by itself. It can only change as a consequence of a specific action being dispatched. Actions are created with a specific payload in mind. For this reason, the updated state is predictable. And so each time an action is dispatched, it's almost a guarantee of what will be updated and rendered in the view. For the purpose of my talk, the important thing to keep in mind is that the state, in order to be updated, needs to have an action dispatched, which makes it to the reducer to update the state. But on the way to the reducer, it's the middleware that can make some changes to maybe modify it in a, in a way that will be beneficial or just to log it and do other sorts of actions that you can find useful as well. So why use middleware with Redux? It's a third party extension point between uh, dispatch and action the moment it reaches the reducer. Key being third party, which means anyone can make one. Uh, and many people have, and this has like, created a whole new library out there for you to modify what you can do with Redux and uh, React or React Redux. I personally think we underestimate middleware, because when we were learning it, the very basics, something like Thunk, how would we have been able to make an asynchronous request to the database, wait for that to return, and then update the state with that? It's basically impossible, so I do think we underestimate some of the most basic middlewares that are out there right now. But in order to make sense of why Redux middleware function is set up the way it is, I kind of want to look at the way it would work otherwise. We'll start off with some most basic examples for logging. So right now, assume we're, using, uh, we're not using React Redux and we're having to pass down the store explicitly. This would require you to find every single place where you're dispatching an action and console log it, which this leaves room for human error. So say you forget to put it in a specific place, therefore you're not going to log it each time. It's obviously not ideal. So the idea would be to put it in a function and uh, allow you to modularize your code and uh, put it where each uh, action should be dispatched. It makes it a little uh, less, it makes it a little more dry, but this still isn't ideal or the most efficient way to go about it. It requires you to place a function in every single location where you will de be dispatching an action. We may want to do something more along these lines to where you would replace the dispatch function on the store with an instance of our previous logging function and then you would assign store.dispatch to next that way when it's called it will perform the action of store.dispatch meaning that every time the store.dispatch is called it would basically be our logging function as well but with this setup it's not ideal either it's guaranteeing that it'll be logged every time but we shouldn't be going around changing the keys and uh, properties on the Redux store. Even though it is possible, it's still not ideal or the most efficient way to go about doing so. OK. This is finally it. This is how the Redux middleware is set up. All the previous steps were helpful in seeing why the final middleware needs to be set up the way it is, being that it needs to take the store, the act next, and action and, uh, and how it uses them within the middleware. Looking at the format, you can basically see that it's, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. The way it's set up is required. You must have those three in the curried function in that specific order. A lot of this really has to do with the way Redux works underneath the hood. The, my understanding is what they do is they grab the store 
and they create an instance of it, and they run this function uh, uh, quite a few number of times. But basically, this is just the way it needs to be set up in order to work. But as of now, you can see how the actual logger middleware that we use now works. It console logs out the action type and the action, letting us know that it has been dispatched. And you can see why the action is uh, required as an argument in this instance. And as before, a result is being assigned to the next action. So at the end, it can be returned and continue on its way to the reducer. And the store, obviously, is needed to get, uh, get the state and console log it so you can see what the state is at that current time. So with this knowledge at this point, all of you can currently build a middleware. But first, let's see what's out there. So what middleware already exists? There's Saga. It's almost like a separate thread in your application that's solely responsible for dealing with uh, side effects. Since it is a middleware, this thread can be started, paused, and canceled from within the main application with Redux actions. It has access to the full uh, Redux data and application state, so it can dispatch Redux actions as well. It, um, the main thing it uses is it takes use of the, or makes use of the ES6 generators. It's very interesting. It's a bit complex to dive into right now, but I really do recommend that you, you go home and take a look at this because it'd be very beneficial in some of the things we have been doing. Another one is Apollo, and Apollo manages the uh, uh, server-side GraphQL in our, your React app, well, so you don't have to. And of course, there's Thunk and Logger, which we're all familiar with. So at this point, Let's take a look about how easy it is to implement your own. So what I decided to do was to implement my own version of the Thunk middleware with our favorite app, PuppyBook. So as you can see, this will be the action being dispatched, and it returns dispatch, or a function that takes dispatch. And all the Thunk middleware does is it checks if the action that it's receiving is uh, checks if the type of it is a function. If it's a function, it'll uh, invoke it with store.dispatch. So now everyone finally sees why we need to put dispatch in as an argument for Thunk middleware. <laughs> and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here and run it so you should be able to see why and will basically the path that the uh, action takes on the way to the store within a thunk middleware. So requesting all of our puppies. What it first hit is in my thunk middleware, this right here dispatched the action, which then went off and came back, as you can see here, and re dispatched received puppies. Since receive puppies was not a function, it went through the thunk middleware as passed on by next, as it shows, next action in my thunk. So hopefully this helps everyone understand thunk a bit better, but I also want to show people other things that uh, middleware can do. Basically, I want to show you the power of middleware with Redux. Seems that something here has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the point of this is a simple middleware function can entirely change what is shown on the application and in the rendered view. All this does here is check for the action type. If it's select puppy, it changes the name and uh, the image to be a place kitten. And basically a simple mapping here to change the names that are rendered on the home screen. So back to the slides here. I want to show the confirm example. It's kind of my, my last example that really brings home the usefulness of Redux middleware. Confirm, uh, confirmation middleware is used when deleting something. We can think of it uh, of an action. We've always thought of an action that has 
two properties, you know, the, the action type and the payload. Well, it's not true. It's an object and it can take any number that you want it to. So in this specific example, you can see at the bottom, the action created takes a should confirm. And once it gets to the confirmation middleware, it checks to see if action should confirm, which is true, it uh, runs confirm. For those of you who don't know confirm, it creates a little box over here on the side that gives you the option with the message that was entered for OK or cancel. If you click OK, it returns true, which is allows it to continue. It hits next and passes the action on. If you click cancel, it basically returns false. Therefore, it does not continue. It doesn't hit the else either, which passes it on, which basically cancels it. So this is one way you can use a middleware if you know outside just on the front end to, to set up a, a confirmation of deleting something. Or it's, it's, it's just another way to think about any number of values that are in properties you can add to your object and pass it through to your own custom middleware to, to basically update the state or not update the state in this specific instance. What I'm trying to say is it's very easy to make your own middleware and I think it can become very useful when you find these specific cases in which it could be beneficial to your program and there's not a library out there. But I encourage everyone to go look for their libraries, see if they're out there. If not, make your own. So thank you very much for your time and please look into Redux middleware. Thank you.